Feldy in this video will discuss thickness fringes and bending contours. Thickness fringes are directly related to the solution of the Helly Willing equations we derived back in chapter 13 when we discussed the intensity of diffracted beam using the dynamical approximation. Understanding the bending contours will pave the way for understanding the dislocation imaging in TEM. Whenever we discuss diffraction contrast, we have to bear two things in mind, the sample thickness and the excitation error. If you vary the sample thickness while keeping the excitation error constant, it will give you the thickness fringes. If you change the excitation error while keeping the sample thickness constant, you will get bending contours. Therefore, there is a strong connection between the thickness fringes and the bending contours. Let's look at the thickness fringes first. I hope this equation is not a stranger to you. It is the solution for the Helly Willen equations. If we plot the intensity as a function of thickness, you will get this graph. The intensity of the direct beam and the intensity of the diffracted beam, they oscillate and they are dynamically coupled. In Bryfield TEM, we only use the intensity of the direct beam to form the image. Since the intensity of the direct beam is a function of sample thickness, most of the TEM samples are wedge-shaped and the thickness is non-uniform. As the sample gets thicker and thicker, the intensity oscillates and will have bright dark, bright dark fringes called thickness fringes. In bright field TEM images, the dark fringes will appear when the sample thickness is half or one and a half or two and a half of the extinction distance. There are a couple notes here. You see thickness fringes most prominent when you do the two beam condition. When you have other diffracted beams present, the effective extinction distance is reduced, so you don't really see those thickness fringes. Another thing is when the sample is fairly thick, absorption will take place and the contrast of thickness fringes will be reduced as well. Here is a good example showing both the thickness fringes and the absorption effect. As the sample gets thicker and thicker, you don't really see those thickness fringes. Because thickness fringes are from the dynamical contrast, their intensities will be complementary in the bright field and dark field images. The figure on the left shows the example where it is bright in the dark field, it is dark in the bright field. By the way, the caption for this figure is not quite right. A is actually a dark field image and B is a bright field image. The figure on the right is more art than science. It shows the thickness fringes in a chemically etched thin foil of magnesium oxide. Those are the holes in the specimen. As you go into the specimen, you see thickness fringes. Next, we'll discuss the bending contours. In the Williams and Carter book, the authors said the bending contours are annoying but useful. Assume most of the specimen have large excitation error. Therefore, the intensity of the direct beam is high. So in the bright field TEM image, the specimen will appear to be bright. However, very locally, because of bending, like here and here, the local excitation error is equal to zero the intensity of the diffracted beam will be at its maximum and the intensity of the direct beam will be at its minimum. In Bryfield TEM image, locally, these two regions will appear to be dark, which gives rise to the bending contours. Bending contours can offer crystal symmetry information in real space. The zone lines you see here are called real space zone axis patterns or zaps. You can see from the diffraction pattern it has a two-fold symmetry. This symmetry is also shown by the bending contours. Also at the intersection of the zone lines you can see a dark patch and at this patch the specimen is right on the zone axis. This is a really nice example to show you the relationship of bending contour to the g vector you use. Each bending contour corresponds to one g vector. Because the excitation error at that specific g vector is equal to zero, you see the presence 
of the bending contour. When you change the G vector, different sets of bending contours will show up. In this and the previous videos in the imaging module, we mainly focused on imaging the perfect crystals. But perfect crystals, just like perfect human beings, are boring. It is the defect that make the crystals interesting. In the next three or four videos, we'll discuss TEM imaging of crystallographic defects.